Welcome to Get Your Shoe Together, the photographer's podcast where we discuss studio, business, life, and keeping it all in line. I am Kara Derryberry. And I am Mary Fisk Taylor. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I am, girl. How are you? I am good. Oh, I... that did not sound good. Anybody <laughs> listening is like, uh oh. No, I am good. So I was rushing, uh, you know, it, it's summertime and, um, I have, I have my daughter Lucy with me quite a bit. We've done like some camps, but we've had some weeks where we're kind of, she's just spending a lot of time with me in the studio. She's being amazing. She's being awesome, but she is a little hard to get out of the house, mm. you know? Um, so when I was like rushing to get, I like packed a lunch for the studio and I'm like, you know, doing the dishes real quick and I got her fed and I got her dressed and I'm getting out of the door and I get to the door and I reach for the door for the car and there's no handle on my car. <laughs> oh no. There's no hand. Like, I don't know if you heard me. I reached I- for the door handle and there's literally none to be found. Where- Is that the picture you sent me? That's what I sent you. I could not tell what that was. And it never would have registered to me that. And why would you? Because, because you just, there's no, so is there like a door handle thief running around Tallahassee <laughs> or. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. I, I'm not a, I'm not a real big car person, but I will right. say that I have had the same car now for, for quite a while. I, I drive a, um, an 09 Ford Flex. Okay. And it is perfect for for carting the kid around and for carting the equipment around. It's great. It's like a hearse. Yeah, you know? it is. And I know so, exactly what you're talking about. And I, and I adore this car. And it's so like a we, newer version of the station wagon. Exactly. A smaller, newer station wagon. I got it. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, it's kind of a, it's a weird looking car. I'll give you that. But <laughs> it is practical for my needs, you know. And, and so, so I've been hesitant to get rid of it. And it's had a number of things go on with it in the last couple of years. The handle falling off mm-hmm. sometimes is one of them. <laughs> oh, so this is an ongoing thing. Yeah, except usually I know, like, I'm there when the handle falls off. And today I came to the car and there was no handle. None. <laughs> and we've repaired it so many. I mean, we've bought a new door handle. We've repaired it so many times. The thing about the, the car is, is uh, as everyone is laughing at me, um, it's paid off, Mary. The car yeah. is paid off. It's, it's hard. A, it's hard. Uh, I know. And and it seems silly to get rid of a paid off no car payment car because Does occasionally it go, if it doesn't have a handle I'm just I don't know I'm just going to throw that out there <laughs> occasionally <laughs> it doesn't have a handle now I because this has happened this is maybe the fourth time in yeah. the lifetime of me having the car that the handle has fallen off um, because of it I have a couple of methods for getting into the car <laughs> if that happens <laughs> so one of the methods is climbing in from the passenger side. And, and and undoing the door from the inside and then getting back out of the car. I've also climbed over the console from yeah. the passenger side to get in the car. At one point, I figured out a way to like manually do it, like by hooking my finger into the into the cavity where the Ooh. handle lock would be. I feel like that's a little risky. I don't know what I'm dealing with in there. It's just blindly, but I was able to open it a couple of times that okay. way. Um, so, but my point is this: it's paid off, right? <laughs> Yeah, and it's and and you know what's um what's a little inconvenience every every once in a while. I mean, there's been other things too with the car that are a problem, but but this one, cheesy, <laughs> cheesy, <was>, girl. <sighs> I, I love your down. I love your frugality. Like I love the fact that you're like, no, it's paid off. But you know, sometimes you know sometimes we have to, <laughs> you know, grow up and move on. And I understand. I just bought a car. And I had, yeah. paid, my car was paid off and I haven't had a car payment in several years. So it was like, oh, do I really want? And, but yes, it needed to happen. My car had a lot of miles on it. Things are starting now. And now I'm going to be honest. The first time the door handle fell off, that would have been a hard stop for me. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm telling you the story. That would have been a hard stop. Like I, it would not have had to happen again. I'd have been like, hey, honey, we're going to be getting a car this weekend because that's just how I am. I'm just, I'm yeah. too old and fat to like have to climb over the console. I pay too much for my <laughs> manicure. It'll be sticking my finger in something and trying to open it. Like, uh, no, no, no. So, yeah. So, I mean, I love it. I love it. But I just, you know what? Maybe it's just time. Or you can keep the flex. There's an idea. Keep the flex for the studio car to haul gear and get something smaller, you know, maybe more zippier, zippier, or you know, the uh, like a what, what's the trend? The electric, not electric. Is um, that a tr- no, like a hybrid? <laughs> a hybrid. hybrid. 
Dang. Like a hybrid. Yeah, hybrid. I could do that. I guess I could do, I don't know. I feel like I, I, you know, we did, we did talk about uh, uh, trading this car in. I don't know. We would get almost nothing for it probably, but like. Well, not we without a about, handle. Not without a handle. <laughs> um, but we talked about trading it in a couple of times and we landed on Keep it maybe busy. one, maybe one more year with no car payment. Maybe one okay. more. I just, it, every time this happens though, I regret that decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, we have an old Suburban. I mean, it has got 200,000. I mean, God bless a Chevy Suburban. It's got over uh-huh. 200,000, but it's what well, you saw at the beach. I mean, it is a workhorse and it's just to haul equipment or, or to make big, if we have a large portrait delivery, it'll hold very large prints and uh, portraits for installations. And, you know, that's, but around town, you know, we have other things mm-hmm. that have mm-hmm. candles. <laughs> all right you know i don't know <laughs> what if the air conditioning went out would you get a new car then because you live in florida it did go out one time oh god um and i did <laughs> well what what had happened was is the radiator fan like blew up and then it started smoking mm. and then the ac was blowing hot anyway it was a whole thing i got it fixed okay um it it leaks also and it has a cracked window oh okay <laughs> I, I don't even know. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not my friend, sure. My friends won't ride in it, but <laughs> nobody wants to ride in it anymore. Well, That's they really... have to let you in. I don't know how they, <laughs> you, you, you actually need someone to ride with you to open the driver's Mary, side door. Mary, if, if it's paid <laughs> off. It's paid off. I hear and you. I, and I, I fixed the radiator. Okay. All righty. Well, so, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel, I feel like, like, I feel like I'm very glasses half full here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this. I, Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. Even, I don't know. I love a car. I love a nice car. Mm-hmm. You do. So I can't relate to anything you're saying. I'm going to be honest. I, I don't even know how to relate to you right now. I don't even know who you are. I'm yeah, not, you do. <laughs> this doesn't surprise no, you at all. No, it doesn't surprise all. me at all. You're right. No, no. You're right. This all is right, very Kira. So, so I am going to get, it, that this, that's what's endearing about me is this. Um, so I'm going to, I, I will fix the door handle. Kevin is going to pick up some super glue on the way home. Shut your face. It's, that is how you fix it. That and, is how you um, fix it? I think, I think that's how Kevin fixes it. Okay. I think, I think like a repair shop maybe like re- fixes it in a, in a more mechanical way, but that's how Kevin fixes it. So, um, <laughs> that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and maybe maybe we will start considering the possibility that it might be time to upgrade the car. I am making the biggest shit's creek face right now. I'm like being <laughs> Alexis. I'm literally like, mm, ah, wow, wowie. Like I don't even know what to say to you. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, good luck with that. Um, Thanks. I super- you know I feel I feel like I'm feeling positive. Ah, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> feeling very positive that you need to get a new car. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's going on with you today? Oh, you know what? I, um, I don't know. I actually, um, it's just been a weird kind of week. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of feeling, you know, we, we were talking earlier, like, uh, even our friend, our good old friend from New Hampshire, Jeff Tachowski, mm-hmm. he called me the other day and he's like, you know, blah, 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 like all these things that was just, you know, cause we work by ourselves so much and we don't have, and I, let's be honest, our family does not want to hear us complain no. about no. the client that didn't, couldn't finalize their sale or didn't show up or, you know, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we play to each other. That's just what we do. Yeah. So I was like doing really good. And then he called me and then I felt like the wheels fell off my whole the rest of my week. Like I just, I think it's been downhill since I talked to Jeff. So what I've decided <laughs> is I'm not going to talk to Jeff anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Aww. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, you know, it's been okay. I just, it's been a weird week. I was so busy with beach sessions and having fun and doing things. And I've had several sessions this week, but they just weren't, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I did a good job qualifying them or maybe my consult. I don't know. Something has just been off this week. I can't figure it out. I will. Well, we all have that too. It's also summer and summer is a, for me anyway, summer is kind of a Time for, you know, I have, I, the studio is busy with headshots all the time, but Mm -hmm. the family sessions for me started to dry up because it's just really hot and, you know, people are at camps and on vacations and that sort of stuff. So I'll have like, like last month was like crazy, crazy busy, great sales, consistent, constant this month, but probably because of my travel and the effort I'm putting it. Like, I, I feel like I've lost a little bit of my like drive that I had in the first, you know, 
few weeks of being in here. And it's not because anything has changed, really. I think it's just it's summer and things are just slower and it's hot and I just kind of want to nap. Well, and you you're know? also, and you also, you know, you have Lucy full time. I mean, you're not yeah. able to like, so like when we're in the school year and I'm, I'm past this because my kids have, have left me, <clears throat> i.e. graduated oh. and gone to college. But anyway, same thing. And, um, you know, it's different because, you know, you, you drop them at school and you have your day organized. Well, then summer hits and it's like, maybe it's camp that day. Maybe, oh no, do they have camp on this? And you're just, it's, it throws it throws everything into a weird little tailspin is what it, what it does. At least it, it does. It did. Used to it kind of, it kind of throws my, my days. It kind of cuts my days in half. It's not that I'm and it, and I do have her some semi full time and it's a, every couple of weeks or so we, you know, I had her on the, on our vacation mm-hmm. the whole week, which was, but I wasn't working. And then this week, um, I have her, but hang on one second. I have her, but not, um, it, you know, Kevin has been able to help out a oh, little bit. Course, we sort yeah. of bounce things back and forth as we've had appointments. Um, and then next week is, as the time we're recording this next week is 4th of July. So we'll, we'll both be bouncing her back and forth then. And so, but then she'll get back in camp. So it'll be fine. But I have that mom guilt that you yes. have where it's like, it's like, um, it's summertime and she should be spending every moment by the pool or at some doing like, something fun. Chucky cheese, doing yeah. something fun or whatever. So later today, in fact, after we finish podcasting, I've promised her that she's going to have little friends over and we're nice. going to, they're going to come over and meet the new kitty and, um, and hang out. So, Silly Dan. Do you think Steely, Steely Dan, Dan wants to meet anybody? Steely Dan is a he's a nice he's a nice kitty. He's very friendly. Oh, is he's, he? Yes, he's very patient with kids too. Oh, that's okay. so so. Yeah, I expect it's going to be it's a little bit different than our old kitty. Of course, our old kitty was um kind of a grumpy old lady, <laughs> but she was kind of always a grumpy old lady, like even when she was a little kitty. Yeah, it, but you know, so mm-hmm. um, Steely Dan is a big change. <laughs> yeah, personality wise. Well, <laughs> Steely Dan's very very cute. Um, I uh I think that. What we don't do enough of and when we have this happen is, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm a big planner. Like, I'm a big, like, I'm a very big fan of blocking out chunks of time to do the things I need to do. And when I schedule that, I sit down and whether it's, now obviously with my photography sales consultation schedule, you know, I look at my week and I say, okay, I have these three sessions, I have this two order appointments, I have these consultations. And then I look at the other chunks of time and I schedule it, right? I will mm-hmm. schedule, you know what? I need to work on my fall lookbook. I need to get or get some website images to my designer, whatever it is. And I will schedule those things. But I always make sure I leave time for me personally, or when the kids were at home that I schedule time with them or schedule, you know, Whole Foods happy hour dates mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. it is, right? And I don't, I think that we have to understand that that calendar shifts depending on the season. Cause if it's busier time, fall, or like you said, you had an amazing May or whatever, that schedule changes. There is nothing when you own your own business and you're wearing essentially all the hats and trying to be a spouse and trying to be a mom, a parent, or you know, all these things. It just has to be very fluid. It's 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 more like a song than it's nothing consistent. But yeah. I think we get we expect our lives to be consistent and we don't give ourselves the grace to understand it's not going to be. It depends on the season, it depends on the week, depends on the kid, depends, you know, all these things. And I just feel like if you, we did a better job scheduling our lives, um it just, I don't know. It just makes sense to me. I, I know it does does it not make sense to you? It makes sense to me. And what I'm hearing most like overall. And I feel like I've been hearing this a lot, like in our, in our discussions that we've had over the last few weeks Mm -hmm. is like to give yourself a freaking break. (laughs) Give yourself a break. You were so right because I have talked to a lot of photographers this past week, you know, and every single one I've had to say, give yourself a break. You've got your mother in town. You're, you're not feeling well. You're, you've got three kids at home. You, I mean, you know what I mean? And I'm like, give yourself a break. Why are you beating yourself up? We're not robots. We right. are not superheroes, you know, and I, maybe it's, I'm just coming from, maybe I'd made those mistakes and that's why I'm coming from a, a little bit of a place of authority in that respect that I, if I could give anything to younger, newer photographers or place, you know, especially when you still are at, at a space where you have kids in the home, et cetera, give yourself a break and make sure you take time for yourself and schedule it and, Schedule family time and time with your spouse and friends. And, you know, like we did when we made ourselves schedule to go to the beach or when we, you know, uh, schedule our, you know, 
girls night out or what, whatever it is. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. We just, I think you have to schedule it because if you don't, it never happens. And then what you wake up one day and it's three years later and you're like, wow, you know, I don't, why don't I talk to this person anymore or why this or why that? And life's just too short. I don't know. I'm a big fan of it. Obviously I'm a big, big fan of it. And uh, I think it makes my life better and I highly recommend it. (laughs) Well, the other thing it'll help you be is more efficient. And I think that some of the nuggets that we are, we've been hoping to kind of put out there with this podcast is ways to make this whole lifestyle of being a photographer a little bit easier on you. Mm-hmm. And one of those things is the topic that I, I know we really wanted to get into today, which is shooting for the sale, because I can't think of another way <laughs> to really tighten up your efficiency and make and, and value your time more than not wasting a bunch of time shooting for things that may not sell. Exactly. You know, like, no, yeah. you're exactly right. And let's, so let's last podcast, we talked about streamlining and consistency in our lighting right? In our Mm -hmm. camera room, because it allowed us to engage with our clients. It allowed us, it freed us up of all that technical, you know, getting in our head stuff. So same thing with the actual session itself. For some reason, um, now see, you know, I was a film photographer, so Mm -hmm. it was just not economical when I first opened my studio to do what a lot of us do today, which is photograph every single thing at every single session and just like throw it at the wall and see what sticks. And I feel like there's a lot of that indoors, outdoors, color, black and white, artistic effects, change Mm -hmm. clothes, put them in a basket, put them in a barrel, put them in a, I don't know, like it's all (laughs) over the place. And I'm like, Whoa, what are we, what are we doing? So, um, you know, 20 years ago we started this and we very much drill it down that we look at, first of all, I look at every client times 10. And what I mean at that is I assume every client's going to come to me or send me enough business that it's going to be 10 more sessions. I just look at them that way. It doesn't always Mm -hmm. happen. Sometimes they send me more sessions. Sometimes they never come back, but that's just how I look at it. So I don't need to give them every look, every style, every single thing, every time I photograph them. I really talk to them and here's an idea. Listen, I listen. Hey, why did you call? What have you seen? Did you know, was it a social media post? Was it something on my website? Was it a neighbor's portrait on the wall? And I hear that and I say, okay, let's talk about now who are we photographing? How old are the kids? Where are we at? I am certainly not one that loves if they have a newborn and a two-year-old and a three-year-old, I'm not going to probably recommend to go on the beach or to go out right. in the garden because that's like photographing a cat, a goat, and a, a baked potato. I mean, it's literally the worst <laughs> idea ever. So I'm going to say, you know what? Let's do Let's do relationship portraits in the studio. And then when the baby is two, then we'll do an environmental. And I start talking about that at the initial phone call. And I really get them drilled into be thinking about how we're going to curate their life visually. You know right. what I mean? And, and it gets them, it gets them trusting your expertise because you're basically coming out of the gate with the authority of like, I know what's going to be best for this age, this age, this age, this age. You come off sounding like an expert. They start handing over the trust to you and you start eliminating that thing where the, where the client will start saying, well, I was really here's what I had in mind as far as like where we're going to shoot and how we're going to shoot, what I'm going to wear. And I'm going to bring balloons mm-hmm. and I'm going to bring a, a, a wagon of, a pony. wagon of clowns or whatever. I'm going to bring a yeah. pony with a unicorn. <laughs> I'm going to put the unicorn horn on the pony and then yeah. it's going to be a whole mm-hmm. cake smash <clears throat> thing, Ugh. you know? And, and, but, but you come off, you have control. You're starting to take control at the very beginning of the shoot so that you know exactly what you're shooting is going to be what they're pl- that you've already like, accepted it in their mind that they need, that they're going to need. Yeah. And using that story. Thank you. So I'm coming Mm -hmm. from a place of authority. You're exactly right. But not just that, I'm always positioning them as the hero of this story. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to story brand, which y'all know I love. But because what I'm saying is, hey, I know that you want to make this the best and you want to make sure that we have that visual family history because this is what's perfect now but you're going to want to make sure that at two, you have this and then this, and I'm building mom or dad or or grandma or whoever's calling me. Like, we're going to make sure that you're never going to look back and regret not having all these milestones and stages, but I'm coming from a place of authority and telling them what I would do. And I also feel like that's some of the strongest language we can use as professionals. You know Mm -hmm. what, when my doctor or my plumber or my land, you know, landscape, whatever, that my, my auto mechanic who would probably say, hey, buy a new car. But no, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> when they say to me, if I were you, this is what I would do. I mm-hmm. go, 
okay, well, you're the expert. I'm hiring you as a professional. I don't tell my dentist, um, well, that's nice, but you know what? I want to do this. Like, no, I, I no. no, we need to do that as photographers. The worst thing we can do is say, and I hear this too much from others is, so what do you want to do? That is when you say that you've lost all control of every single thing and you're no, you're just pushing a button. And I, that sounded really mean, but oof, that's how no, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, but I, I think it's, I think it's something to think about. By no means are we saying that we don't want to hear what a client is asking for and hear and fulfill their needs. What we are saying is that they sometimes don't exactly know what it is you can do for them. Right. And they're coming to you to work with you. Right. You know, so by you taking control, you saying from out of, from the get go, they will they they want this. They want you to say, "Here's what I would do." For your newborn session, I think we should do it in studio. Mm-hmm. For you know, for for your two year old session, I think we should do it in in a maybe in studio as well, or in something in mm-hmm. a small small space, mm-hmm. controlled space. You know, right? And then so on and so forth. And they they want that expertise. That's yeah. why they've come to you. <laughs> they do because you know? they don't know. They've maybe seen something, or obviously they something has come across their plate that has made them engage with your brand. Right? Mm-hmm. They've seen something on social media. They their their sister in law came. What? Or maybe they got a gift certificate. I don't auction. I I don't know what it is, but for some reason they're engaging with their brand and it's your job to establish yourself as the authority and guide them through. And whatever your thing is, look, you know, I, I do a lot of family and children. That's my main job at Hayes and Fisk. That's our main business. But you know, if you're a newborn photographer or high school senior or whatever, I don't care where or wedding, wherever they're coming from, you need to establish how you can guide them through this process and give them what them want, they want. And of course, we listen. I'm listening to them. I'm listening to them tell me, are we looking for, you know, some some, some small prints? Are we looking to just to curate an album? Are we looking for a wall installation? I'm going to listen to them because that's my job. I'm. It's not mm-hmm. me being, I mean, as bossy as I am, believe it or not, when it comes to that, I just, I plant some seeds and ask some questions and listen. And then I go into every se- session. I mean, very rarely do I pick up my camera that I don't already know pretty much what that sale is going to be. I, right. I can almost tell you to the penny what they're going to spend when it's said and done. Mm-hmm. Almost. I mean, you know, obviously I've done this for a while and I have averages and all these other things and I have data to back that up, but I can do, just by listening, by looking at spaces, maybe I go to their home, maybe they send me images of their home. I know if we're looking at wall art, I know if we're probably just going to do a couple of, you know, small prints and maybe a wall folio panel. I know almost every time. Now I get surprised here and there, but I can look at my week and pretty much tell you almost every week what I think I'm going to make. Well, when you start pre-planning, like you're talking about, yep. pre-planning with the client, helping them along the way, you're you're almost like interpreting mm-hmm. what what it is, the, their story, like you said. You're interpreting mm-hmm. their story and how it's going to be told. They've come to you as the author of that, right? right? And so when you when you do all this pre-planning, it makes that sales process so much easier too. I mean, I can't tell you how, how you know, when from when we're booking the session to while we're shooting and I start, even when I say this is going to be the one, like yep. I'll take a frame and I'll know it because mm-hmm. it's, you know, you'll see it and you'll, you'll say ah, this, this scene, something from this scene, or maybe even this image, this is going to be the one that you're going to want to put over the fireplace. Yep. I just know. And you make those, you say those things as you go. And it's not to be, it's not to be like manipulative or anything. It's just to help them visualize where we're, where it's going to go. But it gets them excited. It gets them excited. When you go, ah, I think that's the shot. Like I, and cause they're, yeah. I've already established myself as the authority, right? Which is important. But mm-hmm. then when I say it, they get excited and they are a big part of it. Also, I think when you create that conversation and you cultivate that type of relationship, they become so big of a part of it. Like, whether we've met in person, I do a lot of in-person consultations, but I also do phone consultations. Like when we're talking and we're exchanging images and they're sh- texting me from, you know, Macy's because they're looking for outfits and we're talking about this, like they are as much, they might as well be taking the picture. <laughs> like they become such a part of that storytelling because mm-hmm. I'm asking them to, because I know the more engaged and the more involved they become, the more relaxed the sales session is, certainly the more relaxed the photography session is, and the more loyal they become. They become a loyal client or loyal to my brand. And that's and, what I need. Well, you've built that trust. 
you know? So, so I, I, you know, I think, I think what we're trying to encourage here is to take control. You are a professional. I am a professional. People out here listening to this podcast are professionals or are trying to become professionals if they haven't yet. And it is okay to, to take ownership over this. If, if I hired a plumber, like you said, and I, and I showed him that my leaky sink and, and I said, uh, so the, the sink is leaking and he was like, well, what do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do about it? Exactly. I, and we I do would, that all I would the time. Be like, we do that all I, the time, Kira. I, I, <laughs> I would be like, I would fire that guy so quick. It sounds ridiculous when you say it like that, but guys, let's be honest. I hear this a lot. And well, I, and I don't, I'm not, you know, and, and look, okay, guys, you know what? Maybe you need to build that self-confidence. You know, we gave you a lot. We've hopefully we've been giving you lots of ideas I mean, streamlining that camera room process, streamlining your lighting, you know, celebrating your, all these things hopefully are leading you to this point. But the bottom line is if you can't pull your shoulders back and stand up tall and be the professional, then I'm not sure how you're ever going to have a profitable, sustainable business because you're right. There's not, I can't think of any industry that I would hire a professional and pay my hard earned money to that wanted me to tell them and show them what to do. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Nope. No. Mm -mm. Wow. I don't know. It's one of those things that we do this all the time, but like when we say it out loud like that, it just seems silly. It seems like we're being really, really kind of silly. I mean, it is silly. And look, I know that it takes time to build the confidence in your work and in your pricing. But guys, the day that you are able to look someone in the eye and tell them what you charge and you know that you're charging appropriately to have a sustainable business and a profitable business and they give you that money gladly, it will, it will, you will stand a little taller the next time and it builds. It, it's a process. I, I get mm-hmm. it. And I get that I'm coming at it from a lot of years. You know, I'm on the other end of the spectrum from maybe most of our listeners, but you know, I, I was that when I started out, you know, I was afraid I couldn't even afford me when I started out. Like I couldn't have afforded what we charge us. Shoot. There's still things we sell that I can't afford, but I know what I need to survive. And I'm not in this for a hobby. I'm in this so that when my door handle falls off, I can get a car. You know what I mean? That's why we're here. And you can too. I know you can. You're just being Kira. I'm just You're being being sensible. I'm being sensible. I know you are. I know you are. I know you are. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if it, if we are in this to be profitable and I know, I know you are, I know your business, you know, I know I am. Um, and we have to have confidence and we have to lead this sale. So shooting for the sale means that I am getting as much information up front. I'm listening, listening, listening to them. I understand. Look, if someone calls me and they're like, Hey, I got this gift certificate. I love your work. But you know, I, sometimes I will, I will say, Hey, do we have, do you have an investment in mind or do you have a budget in mind for this? And I'm very respectful of that. You know, yeah, I've had some amazingly huge sales, but sometimes you know what? The budget's $800, $300, whatever it is. I'm going to Mm -hmm. respect that. I'm going to say, okay, let's be honest. So this is what we can do. How about we do this? You know, and I'm going to be very honest. I'm not going to try to pull a fast one on anybody. I'm not going to try to, you know, I would never want anybody to leave my sales room and not feel good about what they've spent or what they've invested. Um, And so I'm not, I'm not saying that. I am just saying that I know going into it, but I also know if that's where they're coming at, that I'm going to say, you know what? That's fantastic. We're going to book you for a signature session, which for me means kind of a basic session. I'm available three o'clock Tuesday, or I'm available on, you know, 11 a.m. next Monday. And um, yeah, let's, you know, it's going to be an hour session. We're going to do one background, one outfit. I am not going to go in there and photograph them in three different locations and five different outfits and all these things because they can't, they're telling me they're not going to buy it or they can't afford to buy it or they're not interested in buying it. I'm just going to be very limited. I'm going to be more restrictive with Mm -hmm. my session, give them the best customer service. My customer service doesn't change. It's just my restrictions change. If they call me and tell me we're investing in an oil portrait for above the fireplace, I'm going to do a site visit. Yes, I'll come in on a Saturday. Of course, you can come in on an evening and order. Of course, I'm going to come install it. It's just a difference. It's a difference in how I handle the actual photography part. The service part, and the photography part is the same, meaning that I'm going to give them the best photography I can give them. And I'm going to give them a smile and I'm going to treat them like they deserve to be treated. Um, but I just, and I know that I, that's how I fill my week. I fill my week with those people that call 
and just are telling me straight up front, they're probably not going to invest in a huge piece of wall art. That's not where they are right now. And I'm going to be like, fine, come in on, you know, come in Wednesday at, you know, 2.30, which is not a prime time for me. Right. You know, I'm not going to go in on the weekends. I'm not going to come in on an evening. Um, Cause that they're, that's, they're telling me up front, that's what they want. And I'm, a, you know, I don't know. And maybe it sounds it's mean. A, I don't know. No, it doesn't sound mean okay. at all. I do, I, I do this the same um, with my headshot. Clients. Exactly. I, I do not shoot headshots on the weekend. Mm-mm. There's, there, there's almost no, unless it's a, a corporation that has a conference and that needs exactly. me on the weekend and they've, and it's multiple people and it's a job, it's a big job. I'm not going to come in on a weekend or an evening. Mm-hmm. for a headshot. Exactly. I just don't. It's not the 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 price mark where it's at. And even with add-on sales, I almost always add on additional headshots um, at every headshot session past what the base package yeah. includes. But that's still not enough to get me to come in at six o'clock at night for a session or to get me to come in um, on, on my Saturday or on my Sunday. And so when I get an inquiry like that, I let them know, oh, we shoot headshots, but you know, between these hours on these days during the week. Yeah. And that's that's just it. And you, I don't budge so smart. on that. And you know what? Because you're not, what I find is it, it kind of goes back to that old saying, my husband says this all the time, you know, you know, um, you know, look hungry, go hungry, which obviously I'm, I'm neither, but I mean, but you know, that whole idea that if you're like, sure, sure. When, when do you want to come in? Oh yeah. Okay. When do you want? No, you're, I don't, I very rarely say that I'll say, okay. So we take executive portraits or, you know, business headshots. Um, I'm available Tuesday through Thursday, you know, 11 to, I give them a range and that's when I'm available. You know, I mean, I don't ever go to the eye doctor and they say, so when do you want to come in for your next eye? You know, they tell me, um, okay, we can do, you know, this or that. And I I think we, we need to establish that we do need flexibility. Of course, if there's a huge, a a big client, or of course, if there's some situation where there's a family member coming in or there's an illness or there's a, of course I am flexible and I have a heart and I will, you know, Mm -hmm. go above and beyond. But I just think we need to be more restrictive and more respect more. We need to respect our time more. It goes back to that. Well, respect thing. yourself. Uh, yeah. Respect respect yourself. You're a business owner, just like any other entrepreneur, any other business owner that works a regular schedule during the week. Right. You know what I mean? It, just because you're a photographer doesn't mean that you're on call like like you're a doctor or something. You know what I mean? Like you're not. We're not delivering babies here. We. Do, you yeah. Know, you know. I mean. Uh, so so. Uh, you know, and my best clients that have been with me for years, I will bend over backwards to do special things for them. If they ask me, of course I will. But what I'm saying is just because somebody asks you to shoot on the weekend doesn't mean you have to shoot on the weekend because you, you know, ahead of time or after hours, you know, ahead of time that this is the full stop amount of money. This is going to make you, you still provide a wonderful service, like you said, but you just do it on the hours in which you do it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just you know? like any other business. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't think that, you know, because I work, you know, I don't think that um, I don't think my family deserves less than a potential client. Right. So what I, you know, like, well, I, you know, I, I missed the kids went to the zoo or they went to a baseball game and I missed this. I missed that really, because you know what, you got somebody in that you had no idea what they were going to spend, but you were hoping and you, you gave them everything. You poured it all in. You gave them everything you can, which every one of us, we bring something to the table. Nobody else in the world can. Our eye, our vision, the way we photograph, nobody else can do that but you. So we bring that to the table and you've missed out on your kid's first home run because you hope. I mean, that sucks. You know, that really stinks. And you know what? I've done it. And I'll tell you, Mm -hmm. it, I could, (laughs) it is, it's, You should. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. And you shouldn't because you and your family, your kids, your husband, your friends are just you deserve better than that. And I want my clients are amazing and I adore my clients, but I'm going to know up front that there is a mutual respect and we all deserve that. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you work in, you know, you bag groceries or you're a photographer or you're a plumber. You know, we all deserve that. And I think we just don't demand it enough in this industry. And it kind of breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because you see it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you get emotional about it because you've done it. I've done it. And I watch my friends do it. Yeah. You know, and I, and I watch up and coming photographers who I've, I've worked with, you know, do it. Um, because you and I, we, we meet so many across the country because of what we, what we do. So, you yeah. know, and it, and, um, and I think, I feel like it's a lot of women. <laughs> it, it is. And then, and then we have guilt. And we, mm-hmm. when you come at things, would you agree, Kara, if you come at something from a place of fear, 
Mm-hmm. It just never works out the way you really want it to. Like if you do anything from a place of, and I'm not talking about like, you know, skydiving or something. I'm talking about, yeah. well, I'm afraid if I don't take this, then I'm not going to have any clients. I'm afraid if I don't take this, I'm not going to make any money this week. If I'm, but when you come at it from a place of fear, it's just so much harder. And I feel like you lose so much more than if you come at something from a place of confidence which I, I understand it takes time to build, but you need to at least start practicing it and scheduling and take limiting, doing something, putting, if you listen to this podcast and you just put one restriction on your time, that's a really great thing. You know what I mean? Like put one restriction on it. I will not take any Sundays. I will not take Thursday evenings. Just put one restriction. And then every so often put another restriction and another restriction. It builds to that. It builds, it builds. And and the other thing that I hear is um, my work isn't good enough yet yep. for me to be picky. Mm-hmm. And um, that has nothing to do with it. Mm-mm. It really doesn't. It, it really just, it doesn't have anything to do with it at all. If somebody wants to work with you, they're going to work with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it doesn't mean that you have to be an on-call no. photographer until you reach a certain level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it it doesn't matter that we have studios either. Like, you know, some people, well, I work out of my house, so I can just run to the park or this or that. No, I mean, you're still taking time away from yourself, your family, your, you know, your life. And, um, just, you know, just, we got to respect ourselves. And I think, I feel like as a community, if we could do that more, people will fall in line. I mean, you know what, if, if, doctors and dentists and plumbers or whatever were like, sure, when do you want me to come by? We would say, well, yeah, come on by Sunday at two. That would be good for me. We would mm-hmm. we would treat that industry the same way. That industry has established restrictions. And so we don't expect that. And we if we do get them off work hours, we expect to pay a premium. Yeah. I mean, I've, and I know, yeah. And, and I know what we're saying might be tough for those photographers out there who are part-timers, who are working like a regular job during the week and then they're working, you know, after hours. But for those, I would say you need to just designate certain times. Mm-hmm. These are the hours. These are the hours that I shoot as my as my part-time gig, as my side gig or whatever. I only shoot on this during these hours. Maybe maybe it is a weekend because that's the only day you can do it. But designate a time. This is when I'm open. Right. And, and <laughs> you know and, what I mean? And you know what? Designate the time and also establish up front what we're doing because you know what mm-hmm. if they're telling you we're just i have a gift certificate and i want to redeem it and they're not willing to really have much conversation don't give them everything don't give them every look every brand every style everything you do don't go all over the park say okay no problem and it's gonna be a 30 minute session and it's gonna be beautiful and you're gonna do you know but don't give them everything because they're already telling you they're not invested and engaged with you enough to even have the conversation. However, if they're super excited and they're talking about it and they're like, I think I want to put something about myself. Okay. Now we have a different idea, you know? Yeah. Um, so we, you have to read your clients and you have to really, really listen and ask the right questions and just establish yourself as that authority and photograph for selling, you know, and I'm not, and look, I, I should say every single session, I hope to create a beautiful artsy image that maybe I enter an image competition or, or that's going to like, just give me chill bumps. I want that every session, but I, I photograph for the sale first. And if I, I take seven minutes at the end, unless the wheels have fallen off or, you know, it's 3000 degrees outside or something, but I try to take some time to create something artsy for me. And I love doing that, but that's for me. That hope- make sure you get your sale images first. A hundred percent. And, yeah. you know, and, uh, I try to do that to, to feed my creative soul, but it doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's just not working out. The kids melted down. The dog has, you know, crapped on the ground, whatever. I mean, something is, <laughs> the, the wheels have fallen off the session. But anyway, just, just, um, photograph for the sale. I know we're talking about photograph for the sale. I feel like I went off on this, like this, this mean tangent. Um, I love this profession. No, and, yeah, I, I just don't, I want to see people be successful and profitable. And, um, you know, I, I want everybody to, I don't know. Like we kind of started off with like a blah week. And I think it's because I've just, I've talked to a lot of people this week that are kind of just beating themselves up and feeling really sad. And I just feel like if they structured their life a little bit differently and they made some restrictions and respected themselves a little more and had more confidence, had had half of what I have in them. Cause these people are amazing. Mm -hmm. They're so incredibly talented and their hearts are so (laughs) huge. And you know, they're, I just wish they felt better. I don't know. I don't know how to make people feel better. Maybe this podcast will make them feel better or worse. I don't know where we're going with this. 
<laughs> I think I think I think shooting for the sale includes all the things that we're talking yeah, about. I, I mean, we, you know, I mean, we're we're talking about when we say shooting for the sale, it, it covers everything from taking control of the sale from the beginning. There's no way that you can shoot for the sale if you haven't if you haven't really listened to your client, really interviewed them and and heard them ahead of time. It shouldn't ever be a guessing game when you get in that sales room. I, you know what I mean? You get in that sales room and then you should have a pretty good idea of what they're hoping to do, you know? And I think, and I think that's all we're talking about here. And that includes making it, respecting yourself and respecting your time. Right. You know, and, so. and if you have questions about this or you're struggling with this, reach out, reach out on our, mm-hmm. uh, any of our social media or, you know, email us. We would love, you know, let's, let's keep this conversation going because, um, you know, I love what Jim Dwyer said. Did you get Jim sent us a nice little email? And it was just so nice, Jim. Thank you so much. And obviously he's a Cubbies fan, which I think that's pretty cool because that's my second favorite baseball team. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was so complimentary and uh, his win was he was just looking forward to another episode. So, Jim, if you're listening, I hope this was a win for you today and uh, that you got some it made you laugh at least or you considered a win anyway. But he- yeah, thank you. thank you for writing, Jim and um, and Trish, our friend Trish Gilmore. Uh, um, her email made me like cry, literally <laughs> made me cry. Yeah. So she just listened to the Story Brand episode, yeah. which we've been getting a lot of really positive feedback on. Um, and so Trish writes, "OMG, Story Brand is everything." I had seen the book on Mary's Instagram, and after reading it, we were, we it we were both said, "Oh God, now we have to redo <laughs> everything." Um, but so totally worth it. It's not about us. No one really cares when you got your first camera. We deleted the about us page on our website and told people how we're going to keep them from having bad photos and, and lost, lost memories. memories. Mm-hmm. Trish and Mariah, they have a awesome wedding business called snap weddings up in Rhode Island. I've known them a long time. They're, they have the most giving hearts and the, they're just two really cool, awesome people. Um, just, I, I love them to death and it was just so sweet, Trish. Thank you. Um, and Hey, um, hey, hey, girl. Trish. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know what, Kira? Um, when, mm. when are you going to be where? I, I'm i not going to get to see you, but you're going somewhere fun, right? I, well, let's see. I am going to be in Louisiana at Professional Photographers of Louisiana um, coming up on July. Close that window and I don't know it anymore. July 18th. Um, I'm going to be in New Orleans. Nice. Um, and I'm going to be judging and I'm going to be teaching on lighting and leveling up and all the fun things that I like to talk about all the time. And then later in the year, I'm taking a little break from teaching. I spent most of the beginning of the year doing it. Later in the year, I'm going to be at the Focus Convention in Orlando, just hanging out. Oh, being right there in Florida. Nice. It, with Florida professional photographers. So September 27th through 29th, if you can come to that, come see us. Yeah. Well, right after you, you uh, unfortunately, yeah, well, I'll be in Maryland, just right up the road, right up 95. And I'll be talking about story brand and uh, shooting for the sale. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, right up in Columbia, Maryland for the Maryland PPA. Um, it's going to be July 24th through 25th. Um, Jamie Hayes and I will be there teaching and judging. And um, it's going to be a great time. And uh, we also have a summer seminar here in Virginia uh, in August. Um, and, uh, for VPPA members, that's free, but you can also attend if you're not a member. Uh, and that's the ninth through the 12th in Fredericksburg. We have your very own Boo Ray Perry coming. Miller's he's is my spons- Boo Ray Perry. He's your Boo Ray Perry. He's spot <laughs> Miller's is sponsoring him. So we're very excited. And Richard Sturdivant will be here and also teaching on Monday, the 12th, um, a PPA continuing education class. So any PPA members can sign up for that. Um, you can go to vppa.org and check it out and uh, get a PPA merit and hang out with Richard Sturdivant as he crushes the box of creativity. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are looking to get those those continuing education yep. merits for various things. That new wedding degree is out. Yes. And so a lot of people are hoping to get a couple of more merits so they can start accumulating that for the wedding degree, which is so exciting. So what a great opportunity to earn one um, and go to Virginia and see Sturdivant and you and Bure all in the same time. All at the same. I mean, like that is just like, poof, we should charge extra for the three of us being there. <laughs> <laughs> or we should pay them to come. I'm not sure which, but it's going to be a great time. And I love getting out, sharing, teaching as well. I know you do. Um, but, you know, we ask people to send us their wins and share and ask questions. How do they do that, Kira Dairy Berry? Oh, I have ways they can do that. They can reach out to us on Instagram at Get Your Shoot Together. They can follow us on Facebook and send us a message there at Get Your Shoot Together. You can actually physically email us through the email systems at girl at getyourshoottogether.com. Unbelievable new technology. And then you can subscribe to us on all of your favorite uh, podcast thing or do's thing or do's so. yes 
Thank your dues. Even iTunes, which uh, finally approved us, which that was finally. super duper exciting. But. Made the cut. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. We look forward to talking to you next week. So we will see you guys next time. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all.